Hey everybody, welcome to T-Roy Cooks. I appreciate you joining us for another Thursday chatting with Troy. Oh man, I'll tell you what, I apologize for all of you that did not know I was taking last week off. I just needed a little bit of uh, rest and relaxation. Uh, just kind of unwind a little bit after the holidays. And uh, I did post that I was going to take last week off on my Facebook page. So if you're not a follower of me on my Facebook page, just go to, look look me up on Facebook. It's, it's uh, what is it? Facebook.com slash Troy Cooks Good Food. Y'all check the description box down below. Hit show more beneath the video and open that description box and y'all check out all my social media. But I usually, I generally concentrate on Facebook for uh, notifications letting you know what's going on with me in case you're curious. I got a bunch of questions here. Y'all keep them coming. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm, I'm, we're just going to go with it. We're going to roll with it. Uh, bear with me. I haven't done this for a couple of weeks, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna get to it. First question. Oh, and uh, I, I'm testing out a new uh, a new microphone. It's actually a, a mic on a boom, and it's running to my my 744T, which I I can show that to you right quick here. Y'all see this? It's all them bells and whistles on there lighting up and all that. Yep, that's my Sound Design 744T, and I got a Sennheiser mic on a boom. And it's so windy out here, man. It's like 80 degrees here and, and just wind from the south uh, coming in and bringing us all that hot weather. <clears throat> so I've got, a, I've got a blimp and a dead cat on the blimp trying to cut down the wind noise. So hopefully y'all can hear me okay. Uh, Martin asks a question here. Have you ever made a video on rubs? No, I haven't made one yet. Um, I'm planning on doing some rubs in the future for myself. And at that point... Uh, I will be selling some rubs, but uh, as far as just doing rubs homemade, I usually just buy stuff off the shelf uh, at my local grocery store, or I buy from uh, uh, like uh, Grill Warrior or Tango Spice Company, or uh, uh, Oak Ridge Barbecue or Texas Barbecue Rubs, you know, places like that. <clears throat> uh, what ingredients are your go-to for bark? I'm still playing around with the bark thing, uh, Martin, uh, so, and I will do that on camera. You know, I'll play around with different ingredients in the bark, and we'll see what produces a better bark. Trying to create the same conditions, and the only change would be the bark is a little bit difficult, but I'm going to attempt to do that for you. And um, let's see what else you got. Here. Ever put honey on ribs or brisket? Honey on ribs? Yeah, I have done that. And uh, brisket? No, I don't do it on brisket. I don't like my brisket. I don't like my beef to be sweet. So I try to steer away from rubs that have sugar in them from a brisket. I generally just salt and pepper, maybe a little cayenne, <clears throat> maybe a little coffee ground, you know, something like that. Uh, I save the honey for the ribs, uh, the pork, you know. Every once in a blue moon, maybe some chicken, but generally on pork. Heavy Metal Barbecue, my brother, my brother out there, y'all go check him out, Heavy Metal Barbecue. Links down below, click show more for all of these YouTube channels that I'm mentioning and um, other, you know, product stuff that I may mention, y'all check out the show more in the description box. Just click show more to get down to them. Um, all right, heavy metal barbecue. Hey, barbecue brother Troy. Hey, bro. Cheers, T. I'm a little bit off my game today. In fact, the sun's setting here in about 15, 20 minutes, so I'm trying to hurry this up. But uh, y'all, again, bear with me. I'm rusty. <laughs> With all the questions about offsets or stick burners, which are all true wood-burning pits, and, and some would say real barbecue, yeah, I would say that. Stick burners are real barbecue. You know, that's where you get your real barbecue. He asks, have you looked at the QBC C60 and your thoughts on it? Um, I, the QBC, that's a, is it Karoo or something like that barbecue? He's, a, he's from here in, here in Texas. You know, I've, I've actually heard of him, and I've seen, I've actually seen his pit, that C60, in action on your channel, Heavy Metal, Heavy Metal Barbecue. Um, it, it looks like it's, it's well designed. I like the design of it. What I don't like about it is that the firebox section is really small. Uh, the research that I've done, I mean, I've never seen one in person, so I really don't know, but the research that I've done says that you can only feel like a brick size you know, a regular red brick sized log in, in that firebox at, at a time. And uh, that's, that's small dimensions. I, I, my usually, my usually uh, wood chunks or you know, split logs are bigger than that. 
and I don't have a chainsaw or anything. So I'd run into problems with that unless I'm just using chunks. And also, if the firebox doesn't hold that much wood at one time, that means you're having to add wood more often. Now, I do like the fact that it's a true wood burner. It's a stick burner. I mean, you don't put charcoal and stuff in it. It's just wood. But, uh, yeah, it kind of, I wish the firebox was a little bit bigger. You know, I'd, I'd give Bill old call and see if he'd send me one of those and I'd put it on my channel. But I need a bigger firebox. I really do. That's my only complaint with it. I, it looks like it cooks great. It looks like you produce some, some great stuff on it, uh, on your, your channel too, man. So I'm hoping you're enjoying it. I may get one one day. We'll see. Jake Edinger. Uh, hope, again, man, you got to let me know how to pronounce your name. I hope that's right. Sorry if I messed it up, Jake. He says, I'm about to start welding my own stick burner over the winter. Can you recommend any good videos on building one? No, I can't. Uh, I mean, I can, I can look, search YouTube just like you can, Jake. And just look through the videos and see what's going on or uh, check out detailed instructions, you know. I know that there are plans out there on the show, you know, telling you how to do it. Uh, as far as videos, though, I, I don't know. I've never really looked. I've never had to. I just, you know, I've never had to build my own pit. Uh, but I, if I can find anything for you, Jake, I'll put it in the description box. Okay, buddy? Appreciate the question. Sorry, I couldn't really answer it for you. Steve Mitchell, I am one week into a six-week dry aging of a rib, ribeye roast that will be cut into ribeye steaks. Which of your cookers do you think works best for reverse searing dry aged steaks? <coughs> um, well, you know, I like, I like to have a little bit of wood smoke on my dry aged steaks. So I'd probably go with either the Kamado Joe, which I can get to searing temps, you know, 650, 750, something like that. Or I would put my, my grill grate on my firebox end of my Yoder Wichita. Light some wood up in there and, until it gets down to the coals. And then I would put my steak over the coals and get that, that nice wood flavor. Which I think is what I did on that 50, that 42 day age dry steak video I did. I think I grilled those on my Yoder Wichita's firebox end. Over some, uh, I don't know, probably pecan wood coals. I like a little smoke in it myself. Otherwise... My gas grill, my DCS gas grill is the way to go, uh, just for a quick reverse here. Uh, let's see, Johnny Meatballs. Johnny, 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 where you at, buddy? Hey, T-Roy, how you doing? I'm doing fantastic, Johnny. Thank you, bro. Have you ever tried to do a pig, and how would you do it? He said, I'm thinking about it as soon as it gets warm. It's a little cold now in New York. Thanks again. Yeah, I have thought about doing pig. In fact, I've thought about, uh, I've actually talked to Tango Joe about it over at the Tango Joe Show and Tango Spice Company. Uh, he promised he'd come down here and visit me one day, and I said, well, man, when you do, let's do some pig, a whole pig, because I've never done one. And I know I can fit one on my yard of Wichita. So uh, I'm still waiting for Tango Joe to come down. Until then, I'll just stick around here and, and keep wishing and waiting for Tango Joe. So it's Tango Joe's fault. <laughs> love you, Joe. <laughs> Tim Starr, love your videos. Hey, thanks, Tim. I appreciate that. He says, I've been addicted to smoking for about a year now. Your videos help me a lot and to decide on my next smoker. Yoda Wichita. Well, welcome to the Yoda family, man. That's a great, great smoker. He says he has an offset vertical and a pellet. And his favorite, uh, Weber Smoky Mountain. That Weber Smoking Mountain's bad, boy. I tell you, man, that's, that's, a, that's a fine smoking machine. He says, I know your views on wrapping and the bark. What are your thoughts on using water pans and bark texture? Well, generally, I like to use a water pan when the humidity is low. Let's say 40% or less, you know, humidity in the air. If it's, if it's a humid day, I won't use a water pan. If it's less humid, then I will. And I cook at such a low temperature that the water, you know, water boils at 212 Fahrenheit. I cook around 225, so the water is just barely, barely having some evaporation. Now, I'll fill up probably, a, you know, like a 8-quart stainless steel pan. I think you've seen it in my videos. And I'll fill that thing up about 3 quarters of the way, and towards the end of the cook, after like a 10, 12-hour cook, it's almost empty of water. So there's definitely water evaporating. And I don't really find that it hurts the bark. If anything, 
what I've found is that the the humidity that's in that cooking chamber when you use a water pan, the humidity helps bind with the smoke particles that are in the air in the cooking chamber and that combined helps get a bark, a nice bark on your meat. At least that's been my finding. If, if you have any scientists out there, any of my followers or scientists, maybe you can explain it better in the comments. Y'all tell us what's going on with the, the chemical reactions and stuff with water and smoke and rub on uh, the outside of the pellicle, I guess you could say, of a piece of meat that's smoking low and slow. Good question, Tim. Critter Gitter. Well, CG, where you at, buddy? Hey, man. T-Roy, the Thursday chit-chat is a great idea. I've enjoyed all 11 episodes. Oh, 11 episodes. I think this is I think this is episode 15. That shows you how far behind I am. So this it's been about a month he's asked this question, folks. But y'all keep the questions coming. I'm trying to get to them. I'm, I'm, honestly, I'm trying to keep these videos about 30 minutes or shorter. Uh, I know my buddy Dan up there, <laughs> Mr. Smoky Goodness, uh, he loves, he'll just sit there and have it going and playing in the background and he, he'll he hear me and uh, while he's doing other stuff, you know. And, and I got quite a few others that have told me they do that as well. So sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll include like a little 45 minute session. I haven't gone an hour yet. I may do that just to try to catch up. But y'all keep the questions coming. And CG, I'm sorry I'm getting to this a month later. Man, I appreciate your question. He says, what pot, what pot do you prefer to make your roux in? Cast iron pot. Cast iron Dutch oven. Seasons greetings from South Mississippi. Yep. Cast iron Dutch oven. That'd be my, my go-to. You just can't make a good roux or a gumbo or anything like that with, a, with anything other than cast iron. Love it. Great question. Burt, 24 pop. What do you do with the meat that you don't eat the same day that you, uh, the same day or night that you cook it? He's asking, do you put it in the fridge or the freezer and how do you reheat it the next day or whenever you want to eat it again thanks Troy sorry if this has been asked before I don't think this one's been asked before uh, Bert generally what I do I will I'll put the meat up you know I'll put it in a either some kind of Tupperware type dish or somewhere I can seal it or even like a a zippable type bag and I'll put it in the fridge thinking that I may make a sandwich with it later in the week for lunch, you know, for work or uh, or after work, you know, I don't feel like cooking, I can just pull it out of the fridge. And usually what I'll do, I, I'm really not a huge microwave guy, so I'll either reheat it in the oven or I'll reheat it on the stove top, depending on what it is. But I rarely microwave, man. Yeah, I really don't microwave a whole lot. The other thing that I will do, let's say like I cooked those two briskets not too long ago, doing the comparison wrapped and unwrapped I will I actually froze like one entire brisket but I cut it up and I froze individual sections <coughs> because I knew I wasn't gonna be able to eat it anytime real soon and I'm still planning on making a chili using that brisket so I hope you know I'm sure it's still good but I just hope y'all stick around and see that it should be make a wonderful chili uh, Eric where you at Eric let's see what he's got does your Weber Smoky Mountain produce subpar briskets versus the offset smoker? Not really, not really subpar. I mean, the Weber Smoky Mountain and the Kamado Joe both do excellent briskets. What I will say, if you've tasted true, authentic barbecue, like uh, like my brother there, Heavy Metal Barbecue, was talking about earlier, if you've tasted real barbecue off of an offset, off of a stick burner that's a well-built stick burner, you'll notice the difference. I mean, you've got a lot more flavor within the meat from that real wood that you're burning. On the Kamado and on the Weber Smoky Mountain, you've, you're cooking it with charcoal, so you get charcoal flavor and a hint of the smoke from the wood chunks that you may throw in there. You know, so it's not the same. It's, it's like apples and oranges. Now, the Kamado and the Weber Smoky Mountain are set and forget it, so that's a plus. The offset, my Yoda Wichita, you've got to main that thing all night, or all throughout the cook. Add a stick like every 45 minutes to an hour. But in my opinion, it does produce better barbecue. Not to say it's way above and beyond the Weber Smoky Mountain, but it's just better. Um, come on over. We'll do a comparison. Let you try it out if you're here in Texas. 
Uh, T Money. Where y'all T Money? My buddy. T Money. <laughs> Cheers, buddy. T Money. Ah. All right. Uh, T Roy, do you have or have you ever cold smoked salmon or cheese? No, I don't. I'm not really a salmon fan. Karen is, but I just don't smoke salmon. She usually grills it. And I want to do some cheese one day because I'm a cheeseaholic, man. I love my cheese. I really do want to smoke some cheese on my Weber Smoky Mountain. But I just haven't done that yet. So hopefully one day I'll get to it. Um, I'll, I'll add it to my to-do list. There you go, Team Money. I appreciate the question. In Ben J 100 Hey, hey, bro, have you tried a smoked daddy? Nope, I have not tried a smoked daddy. Um, I'm pretty sure it's a pellet smoker. I could be wrong. And I, I'm not, you know, I've had meat that, that my neighbor cooked on his Traeger before, pellet smoker. And honestly, it's, it's about the same if, I don't want to say better or worse than the Weber Smoky Mountain or the Kamado Joe. They're, they're, about, they're all about equal. You know, I mean, you're using wood pellets, which help with the smoke and the heat. So it's a little different flavor than cooking over charcoal briquettes or even lump in the case of the Kamado. I mean, each each type cooker has its own place. And depending on how much you want to invest time into manning the pit, what kind of flavor profile are you wanting from the meat that you cook on it? You know, those are things to consider. That's one reason I don't have a pellet, a pellet smoker. I'm just, I've got the Weber Smoky Mountain and I've got the Kamado Joe. I just think it does similar to what I've tasted from uh, Traeger. But honestly, I don't know. I may get one one day. We'll see. Maybe Yoder will send me one. <laughs> uh, Peter, where you at, Peter? He says, I know it's not a very common cut to smoke or grill, but what's your opinion on using beef tenderloin? Oh, brother. Peter, that beef tenderloin smoked is fabulous, man. It's fabulous. And I, I did a Chateaubriand. It wasn't smoked, but I did a Chateaubriand for Lil Bells one time. And you know, the tenderloin's real long. The Chateaubriand is the center section of that tenderloin. Man, you take that, wrap some bacon around it, put that baby on the smoker with some rub on it and stuff. And, ah, primo, primo. Give it a try, man. Yeah, that's good eating right there, man. Great question, Peter. Thank you. Smoking ham is barbecue. My good friend Ashley, he's got his own channel. He's a newcomer. Y'all go check him out. Smoking Ham's Barbecue. Links below. If you could have any smoker out there given to you free, what would you choose? You should also put out a cookbook. <laughs> I appreciate that, Ashley. Yeah, I'm eventually going to get to making my own rubs and, and, and doing my own cookbooks and stuff. Y'all just bear with me. You know, it's, it's hard. I got a 9 to 5 job and I do this after hours and on weekends. So, only so many hours in the day. Uh, sorry about that. My neighbor's kids are out playing in the backyard, driving my dogs crazy. Uh, any smoker out there giving to you free? Man, you know, I guess the one thing that I would maybe want that I have never tried is a reverse flow smoker, like, like a Lang or something similar. I think that would be pretty cool to have. But also run into the situation where if something's given to me, I feel like I owe that company, you know? <coughs> I, that's why a lot of the stuff that I use, I buy myself. I, I don't, I get a lot of offers all the time. People want to send me stuff. I'll just go out and buy it myself, okay? Now, I will say here recently, Thermoworks contacted me. Just to give you a heads up, um, I recently bought one of their smoke, um, the wireless thermometer probe, wireless probe things, you know, we it's like the Maverick ET733, but a little bit higher quality, a little commercial grade. Uh, they just came out with it, and I wanted one. I've seen uh, my, my buddy over at uh, 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 Maniac, what is it? Damn it, Justin, what's your channel, man? Uh, heck, I'll think of it here in a second. Babyback Maniac, Justin, my good friend up in Dallas. Who's going to hopefully come see me in February for a collaboration? Y'all stay tuned for that. But uh, I saw I saw Justin doing a collab. Uh, yeah, he was doing a collaboration with another channel who was doing a review of the ThermoWorks smoke device. And I saw I was like, man, that's a great looking device. You know, it looks a lot easier than the ET733 from Maverick to uh, to configure and stuff. So I got one. And I've been using the ThermoWorks 
uh, the, the little quick uh, the pins. What do they call them? I'm having brain farts, people. Y'all forgive me. I'm getting old. The uh, the thermopin. I probably got five or six of them. You know, I love those things. They work wonderful. Give you an instant reading within like two or three seconds. I love them. So I've been using those quite a bit. And one of the guys that works, he's in marketing for Thermoworks, said he was cooking a uh, pork butt recently and ran across one of my pork butt videos and saw that I was using the thermopin from Thermoworks. And he emailed me and asked me if I'd be interested in being an affiliate. And I was like, well, hell yeah. You know, so I'll have some links here shortly, not on today's video, but in the future. And, uh, and if you go to Thermoworks, if you're interested in buying one of their products, click the link in my description box and you won't pay any more for it. But that'll help me out. That'll give me a few bucks to, to help, you know, buy video equipment and stuff and help support the channel and buy meat for the videos. So, that's, you know, affiliate stuff like that, that's fine. But as far as getting a big, like, Lang to send me a barbecue pit or, uh, or, or uh, that, that Barrow, whatever that barbecue place, the BB, BCQ, whatever, I forget what it is. Anyway, getting other companies to send me stuff, I'd rather buy it outright. That way I don't feel like I owe them anything. Uh, just my own personal thing. Tess cooks for you. Where you at, Tess? <clears throat> Great to hear you asking a question, man. Test cooks for you. For, and then the letter U. Y'all go check her out. Hey, Troy, I enjoy these Q&As. Thank you, Tess. I really appreciate it from the bottom of my heart. She's, she's got some great videos, folks. Y'all go check out Tess. You are a master at barbecue. Well, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I'm not a master by any means, but I do enjoy good barbecue. Not sure if this has been asked before, you have a set of teal colored floral toolware trays hanging in your kitchen. Yep, you can see them sometimes behind me when I'm filming in the kitchen. They're hanging on the wall. They're turquoise. I got some black ones. I got different flowers and stuff on them. Those are those Karen's. You know, Karen's been collecting those. She's asking, are they old or new? They are beautiful. Thanks, Tess. They're old. She, I uh, think, bought them off of eBay or somewhere, but they're old. They're the authentic old trays. Uh, toll trays that someone hand painted okay so they're old but someone I think maybe recently painted them I'm not I'm not positive I know they're old though that'd be a question that maybe I should get Karen to answer maybe she'll chime in on the comments Neil my good friend Neil where you at buddy do you ever spritz your meats on the smoker with beer or craft beer I, I do and if so what is your favorite beer or meat combination I usually do it when I'm doing beef. Um, I will use a dark beer like a Shiner Bock and spritz it on to my, uh, my briskets or beef ribs, stuff like that. Gives it a really distinct flavor. It's different than what you normally would expect, but I love it, you know. If I were doing like chicken or something, I'd probably go with a lighter, a lighter type beer, uh, maybe an ale, you know, something, something that's like a blonde color beer. But I rarely do that on chicken. Chicken just is, It'll absorb it readily, but the beef, man, big, you know, beef ribs, beef brisket, they can handle that that dark beer. Anyway, hope that answers your question. Guys, it's getting dark on me. It really is. Hope, hope y'all can still see me and hear me okay. But I got to go. That's about 15, 16 questions, and I've still got five, six pages here. Thank you again, everybody who enjoys these chew, uh, Thursday chats and Q&A videos. We'll see y'all next Thursday. And uh, again, I can't thank you enough for the support. Y'all keep the questions coming. If you have questions, y'all ask them down below. I'll add them to my list, and we'll meet y'all back here next Thursday. Until then, y'all keep keep it real out there. Keep that smoke rolling. If you have any questions, and if it's an urgent question, mark urgent on the uh, question that you leave in the comments, or hit me up on Facebook with a private message. Had quite a few y'all do that lately, and I was happy to help. So anyway, thanks again. We'll see y'all next Thursday. Y'all give me a thumbs up. Be sure and share the video. When you do, please tell all your friends that T-Roy cooks responsibly. Cheers, everybody.